I think losing guys on the offensive line yes. and the defensive line, those are the massive losses because the, the, the cohesiveness and the playing together and working together. I, th- I, I think that's what you mentioned, Michigan and Washington, two teams that played for the national title last year. What did they basically lose all of coming like, offensive line? What's going on, everyone? Bear Bets Podcast is back with yet another weekly episode of our college football preview. I'm your host, The Bear. Chris Felica, joined here by Jeff Schwartz, my esteemed and illustrious co-host. We'll be uh, checking in with Sammy P and Will Hill uh, in the gambling group chat later on. But the AP poll is out. Uh, we, we know the the college for where we stand in the, in the preseason, not not a whole lot. Usually I'm like up in arms or like I laugh at something and I'm and I'm wound up about how can this person or this team be ranked where they are. And Jeff, I'm just not fired up about like I'm not wound up. I, I think the rankings kind of are what they are. And let's just play ball and see how it all shakes out. The team, we know the teams that are going to be good. And let's see what happens in, in behind those teams as we uh, get on with the season. Yeah, I think the story to me is just more about which teams out of the top 25 can make a push into into being a playoff team, right? Because the playoff is expanded to to, to yep. 12 now. We we know we know by now who the good teams are, as you mentioned, right? We know the teams that maybe are on the fringe. We know who's going to compete for conference championships. You know, the Big 12 feels most up in the air, right? A lot of a lot of variant conferences feel, always feels that way, Bear. Uh, so it comes down to who can avoid injury, right? Who can implement some some new schemes, new coaches? Alabama, right? New scheme, new coach there. Um, you know, you have some teams that have to replace guys like Texas. I think has to replace. You know, we know the, the running backs, wide receivers, defensive mm-hmm. linemen. Can they do that? Oregon has to replace guys. Ohio State has a new quarterback. I mean, there's right now the questions are pretty much the same for every team. Um, I I always struggle with the team out of nowhere. Like if you look at the AP poll, the coaches poll, uh, Bill Conley's SP plus. I mean, I, I just don't see a lot of Washington TCU, even though Washington doesn't really count in my opinion as I know where they won 10 games the year before. Um, you know, maybe it is your, your UCF golden Knights bear who you're super high on. I mean, yeah. maybe it's, it's them. Like I, I just don't see because of 12 teams. Now you don't really have a sleeper, right? Like you don't, they're going to get in at 11 or 10 at 10, 11 seeds. So, I just can't put my my finger on who that team's going to be. Yeah, I think this is kind of the – we were having a conversation on, on Twitter before about this, about how the playoff and, and how expanding and, like, no no 12 seed is going to win the college football playoff because it's usually going to be the non-AQ, uh, non-P4 team. And, like, if you're looking for a Cinderella, like, there's a difference. Like, you can pick a Cinderella at the start of the year and they can – like if you want to pick a UCF or an Iowa State or Rice to be the, the the team that makes it from the non-power league, like that's fine. That's different than saying on December eighth yeah. on selection day that Rice is going to win the college football playoff because that's just not going to happen. But <laughs> no, I, I think the teams that I mentioned, like you look, yeah. you look like the returning production chart from from, from Bill Connolly, and I think looking. Looking at a team like Iowa State that's got so much coming yeah. back, like is it where they're not really hyped and they're not ranked? Like that is the type of team that I yeah. like to look for. You can get them to win the, the big, win the Big Twelve right around nine or ten to one. Same, same for UCF. I, I think the Big Twelve is a, is a one bid league. It's like, yeah. I was looking; for, those numbers exist as well. Uh, number of teams per conference that will make the college yeah. football playoff. And, and I love that market because I, I like I think the Big 12 is one I, I laid a little bit. I played 150. And you're not gonna you don't always want to lay 150, but I laid under I laid 150 under one and a half teams from the Big 12, and then uh, I think because I think you're gonna get at least eight or nine from the uh, from the Big 10 and the SEC, and maybe if Miami and Florida State and Clemson or, or SMU may step like you might get two from yeah. the ACC. But uh, yeah, I think the returning production is good. But I, I wonder about like how do you think the returning production equates like with so much 
movement oh, going really yeah. on in, in the portal as well? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, just to wrap up on the on the CFP playoff, Oregon and Ohio State will be the five seed there. So whoever is the G five qualifier is going to have to go to Eugene or go to Ohio State. Good luck. So, and then they have to. They're not winning that game. So just like get that out of your mind. It's a great story. I'll be anywhere from. I've seen, unless it's Boise, who just always plays well against Oregon, and they, they play more in the season, too. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Look, the returning production stuff is interesting because, as you mentioned, you know, with all the portal stuff, it's not really, I don't think it's equated much in its formula. But to me, the returning production, you have to figure out why that is, right? Like Stanford's second. That's because they were so young last season, Bear, that they all these guys played – that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be good this season. I think Stanford goes under, actually. They're, I think it's four and a half. Like they're just, they're, you can't find four wins on their schedule. You barely find three. Is Iowa's returning production because it's, you know, it's it's underclassmen moving up? Oklahoma State, for example, right? Their, their offensive line returns a lot of their players, and they're like 23 and a half years old. Was well, that, are they, are they all returning because they're great college players and turning down the, you know, a, a pro opportunity? Or are they just okay and can't go to the NFL, but better than the young guys? Like, you have to sort of figure out mm-hmm. w- where that production is for how well you think a team is going to be. On the flip side, I think when you losing production is a much bigger fall off than the production returning goes upwards, if that makes sense, right? And he, he even outlined this position. article of, of, about Air Force, um, what, 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 uh, what, what happened to them, but he goes through this, like, you know, Nevada 2022 went from eight and five to two and 10 Kansas who lost 25% of their roster went from three and nine to, to, to uh, return 25%, three, nine, Oh, and 12, like the fall off. And you look at teams that, that we talk about as sort of national brands, Michigan, right? The fall off 41% re- uh, returning production, Washington, 42% returning production. Like those teams bear lost a lot this off season. And I think it will affect their win totals. I think it does, but I think certain positions, I think, affect the the win total and, and the production more than like. I think if you lose a starting quarterback or you lose a starting running back, I don't think that's as big of a deal with, with recruiting and then the transfer portal coming in. Like you can replace those guys. I think losing guys on the offensive line yes. and the defensive line, those are the massive losses because the, the, the cohesiveness and the playing together and working together. I, I I think that's what you mentioned, Michigan and Washington, two teams that played for the national title last year. What did they basically lose all of coming like, offensive line? So I, I think that's going to be a problem. And certainly now, look, Michigan's got some guys back and, and obviously the Harbaugh's put his stamp on this team, even though he's no longer there. So you would hope and think that their offensive line should be good. But a team like Washington with a new coach and a different scheme and, and a whole bunch of new guys coming in, I, I think they will struggle. Yeah, the, the Michigan one is, has kind of a double whammy, right? Because it's offensive line and young quarterback not replaced with a bunch of veterans. It's some portal players, certainly. So, that you know, that's the way you look at, to me, uh, returning production. And so it's a good tool to have. I, I love, you know, Bill C's stuff is fantastic. Um, good, good tool to have to figure out um, where you should go with maybe some of your future wagers. And speaking of some future wagers, Sammy P and Will going to join us here, kick around some uh, – some awards markets and some other things, the Gambling Group Chat. For the first time this year, the Gambling Group Chat is back to talk college football. Last week, Sammy and Will were here. We kicked around some NFL stuff, but the the college gang is back. College football season rapidly approaching. And, of course, the uh, one of the first questions we always get is, who do you like to win the Heisman? So I mean, you look at the top of the, the, the Heisman board, and uh, Dylan Gabriel is taking a ton of money right now. He's the favorite, Carson Beck. Uh, second choice, and then a lot of other quarterbacks there at the top of the board. Uh, Sammy, I'll start with you because uh, you you had a a really good Heisman play last year, and unfortunately, uh, it didn't get there. And then I know we kicked around Bo Nix as well, and uh, he was in position to win, and ultimately didn't get there. Uh, what are you looking at here in the uh, in the Heisman market? Last year, I thought I had it cornered by November fifteenth. Yeah. I had Penix and Nix, and I thought, all right, one of them's going to win, and then. Here comes Jaden Daniels to uh, just rip it out of my heart. But I I look at Jackson Dart this year. I look at a quarterback that threw for over 3,000 yards last year. 
31 touchdowns total. Most of those through the year. He had some on the ground though. He's got like three NFL receivers bear and he's got four offensive linemen that Lane Kiffin has slowly plopped into that line. Cause that was really their weak spot. The last two, three years, the old line. Well, he's brought in four transfers to protect the quarterback and establish the running game. I also guys, I look for Heisman moments. There's a game November 9th in Oxford, Georgia comes to Ole Miss. And I know Georgia's awesome, but Georgia's front is not as good as it's been in years past. And when your D-line doesn't have two NFL guys, your linebackers and your secondary are not as good. So all those things considered, Jackson Dart, 14-1. You know, I I hope nobody gives the favorite out. I saw this stat that the Heisman favorite has only won once in the last nine years. So this is an award where you don't want to take Dylan Gabriel or Carson back. I have made one bet here. Uh, I made I bet Jackson Dart. So I will go a different direction just for the the because I agree with everything Sammy said, but just for the point of content, just to throw some sleepers out there. I think Milrow can have a big year. Remember last year that center killed him, snaps at his feet, his ankles over his head. DeBoer is going to open up the passing game. Uh, we we know how good DeBoer is as an offensive coach, so Milrow is at least interesting. We want to get clicks. We want to get views. How about a bet that's not going to win, but at least, I don't know, you get a cash out or something. I'm not a Quentin Ewers guy. Is it possible we see Arch Manning if Ewers struggles early against Michigan? So if you want like a real dart shot, a real dart, uh, no pun intended, maybe Arch Manning, but uh, I'm with Sammy. I, I think Jackson Dart, for all the reasons he mentioned, is a. Uh, is a good one. I think there are other candidates in these other awards on Ole Miss, which we'll get to. Nice little tease, but uh, Milrow, Dart, and then Arch Manning is at least interesting because I'm not a believer in yours. Jeff, tell us why uh, either Dylan Gabriel or Jordan James won the Heisman. Uh, look, I, I don't think Dylan Gabriel is winning the Heisman as much as I would love for that to happen. Uh, I think he will be in New York. I think that's. I think we could wager like, will you be in New York? I think he will. Bo Nix was in New York last year, right? I mean, Gabriel's going to put up the same numbers or around there. I think that Bo Nix had. I could see him being there, but I don't think he wins the award. I'm not sure he's dynamic enough to do so. You know, part of this is you mentioned the Heisman mon- uh, moment, Sammy. A lot of those are with your legs, right? Is can you make plays with your legs? Are you scrambling? You running down field? And Gabriel can certainly do some of that, but not at you know the rate that some of these other quarterbacks. I, I really like the the Milrow piece that w- the Will mentioned, guys. Kalen DeBoer had Michael Penix, obviously, in New York last year as a runner-up. Milrow is a physically gifted quarterback and needs to work on this sort of the intermediate part of his game, right? He can throw short and throw deep. If he can get him a little bit better in the intermediate with his ability to run the football. There were times last year when he ran completely by defenses I feel like I feel like Alabama's going to be good anyways. So I think Milrow's a a a, a good player. The other one that I think is not going to win, but like could Travis Hunter at cornerback, kick returner, some wide receiver things. Will he even be discussed at this you know in November if Colorado's not as good as, as as they think they can be? I mean, he might be the best overall player in college football this season. He's probably not going to be in New York for the Heisman ceremony though. Yeah, no, I, I, I kicked him around a couple weeks ago when I said I actually did bet him uh, at 65 to 1. And, you know, it, it's going to be a, th- a deal just like last year where both he and Shadur got off to great starts, uh, great numbers, and then Hunter got hurt, and then the losses started piling up. But I figured at 65 to 1, uh, it was it was worth a shot. I think he's still 50 to 1, which is the uh, the shortest priced uh, non-quarterback right now. They got to win eight games, though, Bear. They I know, I know. The Heisman anyway, on a five-win team. Correct. Correct. I know they do. And, and I don't think they're going to, to be a, a seven or eight win team, but in case they are, in case the Big 12 is a complete crapshoot, like we think it's going to be, and somehow whatever's going on in, in Boulder, somehow it all works and comes together, and they actually gel on all these new first-time coaches and all the transfers and, and everything. Like I remember I've had a about six weeks ago, I had someone who I really respect tell me that Colorado, ha- on paper, had the best roster in the Big 12. Now, on yeah, no, games are not played on paper, and you got to no. go up together. Is it t- yeah, I don't know if I believe that either. But again, look, six, like, and bets, we, like Will said, you don't think you're going to win. It's not going to win. But 65 to 1 on someone who could be yeah. the best player in college football will be a top freaking – five pick in the NFL draft next year. I mean, with the buzz and yes. the lower Colorado, you had Paul Hornig won a Heisman, were they five and six or something like that? The, the year he won it, Notre <laughs> Dame, the, the name. Like, like, hey, look, it happens. Like, I bet I bet Hunter 65 to one. 
I bet Jeremiah Smith is 150 to one. I bet Julian Sain, the Ohio State backup quarterback, probably at I had 100 to one. And and I know Sammy, you said you don't want to bet the favorites, but now that Carson Beck, you can get him at nine to one, and he's drifted a little bit. Like that might be worth the play. The the guy's got so many weapons on offense. He's going to be on the number one or number two team in the country. Like. He's going to have those moments. Look, FanDuel has these like correlated parlays where you can bet Beck to win the Heisman and Georgia to win the national championship. Like they're offering 20 to one on that. Like the, the true parlay price would be like 35 to one. If you, if you take like the three to one on Georgia to win and nine to one on the Heisman. So if you can find a place where you can play like parlays with like the Heisman winner and the national title and get 35 to one or so on that, that, that that's not the worst bet in the world. So I, I threw out there Hunter is, is a long shot and Smith is a long shot. Like any, anyone else out there, guys, it might be uh, not those uh, 15, 20 to ones on those guys in the uh, the top 10 on, on the board is someone a little bit longer down the board that might uh, attract your attention. You don't have to tell us who said that Colorado has the best roster on the Big 12. I'm not going to ask you that, but how is Dion doing and what else did he say to you? <laughs> well, I, 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 me and Dion, we, we go way back and I was out. It, when, when Joel did the big noon conversations, I was right there with them. We all had a had a, had a nice dinner out there in Boulders. But, you know, De, Dion tells me that I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, of course. I still have my Dion glasses from last year somewhere. I need to I need to break those out. Can I give you is 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 thirty five hundred a long shot or is that yeah is that, yes. absolutely if, long shot. if uh if if Drew Aller is good this year at Penn State and they go ten and two is is he live for this I mean they have a new offensive coordinator from from Kansas um we got to see more explosive passing game but their schedule's not I mean they're going to be ten they and two to beat Ohio State. and one they can't go ten and two with a loss to Ohio State and, he, and him win. I don't think you can do. It. I don't they, think he got me last year. He can get you this year. I'm done with Penn State. I'm doing with. I'm done. <laughs> I'm just thinking I'm, someone else can have them. But that's perfect. Ten and two gets you into the playoff. That's I agree with that. That I agree with. That I agree with. Schedule's I just, not tough either. They don't no, play a lot of the heavy hitters this year. Their schedule is a lot tougher next year. Franklin's probably going to be favored eleven times out of twelve games, so they'll go eleven and one because they always lose yeah. when they're dogs. That's what they've done since he's been there. And then what does James Franklin do? Oh, let's fire another offensive coordinator. Yeah, that'll fix it. Let me just bring in my sixth offensive coordinator. Um, two. Go ahead, Bear. Sorry. No, I was going to say, Sammy. I know you. I, I heard you the other the other day on on Follow the Money. I believe it was, uh, and. You you seem pretty high on Kansas. Like is Jalen Daniels someone? And like I think he's like 35, 40, 45 to one somewhere around there. Like like is he worth the worth the shot? Because if Kansas is going to be be good this year and in the Big Twelve, it's obviously going to be because of him, right? If he can stay healthy, for sure. That's the one thing you have to stomach with Daniels. I do like their team, and look, they have a young quarterback from Indiana named Cole Ballard who's going to back up Jalen Daniels. He was the guy who came in last year when Jason Bean got hurt. And Ballard played pretty well uh, against Kansas State. So I think they're going to be fine no matter who's a quarterback. Obviously, you prefer Daniels. This is a guy that has the entire kitchen sink back. And look, I, I just mentioned Andy Kotelnicki, who went from Kansas to Penn State. He's the offensive coordinator now for the uh, Nittany Lions. Daniels has Devin Neal back in the backfield, who had 16 touchdowns last year and 1,280 yards. They brought back three senior receivers and four senior offensive linemen. Holy crap. I mean, that's like the whole kitchen sink. So I mentioned Jackson Dart off the top, a lot of returning talent. Same thing in Kansas. The only issue there is if he misses a game, guys, I was in Vegas last week, great panel by Brett McMurphy and Bud Elliott. McMurphy made a great point. You miss a game, the odds are against you. The last Heisman winner that missed a game, Charlie Ward. That's a long time wow. ago. Long time ago. Hmm. That, that, that is great. You know, and, and you mentioned Colt on Nicky gone. Uh, well, Matt Lubick, who is a big part of their support staff and, and, their, and their coaching staff, he's now gone. He's I think he went to Nevada as an offensive coordinator. So not only do you have the actual coordinator, uh, Colt on gone, you got Lubick gone as well. So a lot of turnover on Lance Leipold's staff, even though he did uh, choose to stay in Lawrence, which is a, a coup for, uh, for, for KU. So, uh, we talked about the, uh, the 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 past throwers. What what about the past catchers? Uh, Jeff, tell us why Evan Stewart's going to win the Blutnikov. You know what? I'm glad you mentioned that because last year uh, Troy Franklin had 81 catches. He's actually second on the team behind Tez Johnson. That might hurt Evan Stewart. 
and 1,383 yards and 14 touchdowns. Evan Stewart is better than him. He is a better football player than than Troy Franklin. The problem is, again, they 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 don't really target one guy in this offense, right? And so that might be a concern. And when they are leading big in games, they pull everyone and let and let the young guys play. So there might be a little bit of a of a stats kind of you know not not a stat compiler at the end of games that might hurt his canty. But we I think we agree outside of maybe Jeremiah Smith, like the natural ability of Evan Stewart might be the, one of the best in the country right there. I don't think I'm wrong on that. I would agree with Just that. Just now putting him in the category of 1,500 yards, 15 touchdowns, and Oregon being 11-1. and one. But again, if, if, Tev, if Tev Johnson gets 85 catches, I'm not sure that's enough. You know, they're going to be enough to, to go around. But Stewart's live there, man. He's going to have a good season in this offense. I like Trey Harris, Ole Miss. I just think at uh, in that 20, 22 to one range, you got a guy thousand yards last year, kind of had a breakout performance against Penn State in the bowl game with 135 yards, over 18 yards a catch. And I, I think Bear, I think you and I are head to head on this one. I think we're oppo, which I don't like being on the opposite side of you. But look, if if we all agree on everything, it's not a fun show. I think Ole Miss schedule. Now I don't trust them in a big spot against the the big boys, but their schedule early: uh, Furman, Georgia Southern, uh, Middle Tennessee. State, Wake, Kentucky, LSU, he can really, that number can be cut in half sure. uh, pretty early in the season. And Lane's a guy, let's be honest, he likes to put the old cherry on top. He likes the exclamation point. Uh, speaking of Franklin, Kiffin's another guy. He doesn't mind sticking one in late, running up the score, yes. running up the stats. Uh, I think that's a guy that's live. Yeah, it's funny. another name, I actually was looking at the uh, the bulletin call pods and I couldn't find him because I was, I, I like throwing out some some bombs in this because again, again these award voters and knowing that I have voted on these things before, a lot of times you're just looking at pure production and not like who's the best NFL type wide receiver. Uh, um, Deion Smith at Ole Miss, uh, he, he's practicing now. He's an LSU transfer back at back in Baton Rouge. Like there were some people there that thought a couple of years ago he might be at the level of or better than Malik Neighbors. Wow. Um, but now he is wound up. He's found his way to Oxford. Lane loves him. So uh, we'll we'll see if if you can maybe if you can find some place that has Deion Smith, um, maybe maybe you'll run into a similar Ted Johnson Ever Evan Stewart situation there, but this kid Deion Smith at all Miss I think is a uh, a kid to keep your eye on as well with uh, Sammy. I'm going down to the U guys a lot this year, and this is not a Miami podcast yet, but maybe it will be by the time we get to October and. They're the number one team in the ACC because my numbers this year coming into the season for the first time in a long time. I've got Miami ahead of Clemson in terms of talent be. and power rating. I do. Well, look, look, Dabo, the Dabo, do you know that the uh, the portal exists yet? No. Do you know that? <laughs> oh, you know, I mean, they, 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 they brought in a bunch of newcomers this year. It's a called our recruiting class. Yeah, okay. I'll believe that when I see it, Bear. He's going to play all the guys that aren't good because they've been there and they know the Clemson way. We'll see. I don't know how things are going to go at Clemson, but I got a lot of Miami stuff this year. Cam Ward at quarterback coming over from Washington State. That's going to be a big deal for them. And Restrepo to win the Bolitnikoff is 15 to 1. I also got some canes at plus two and a quarter to make the playoff. So I am uh, I'm you'd up this year heading in. What could possibly go wrong? Exactly. It's funny because you mentioned uh, Restrepo, who is a great, you got great hands, great receiver. I know uh, inside the uh, the building there, they are really, really high. And Sam Brown, who they brought in from Houston, 6'2 kid. Uh they, they think he's going to be fantastic. So, again, if you're looking uh, – again, he and Restrepo are probably going to share ball, share, share catches, split them. You got a good quarterback now in uh, in Ward, allegedly. Again, maybe you run into a situation where there aren't enough balls to go around and uh, they'll kind of negate each other out. But but you could do probably a little bit worse if you find a uh, a monster number on uh, on Sam Brown as well. I, 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 I'm already d- figuring out week one – Big news going to be in Morgantown. So I'm probably going to be watching that game on my phone on the car ride to from Morgantown back to Pittsburgh Airport. And, and it, it's just not going to be a, a a pleasant time for me. That Mario's, is Mario's convention like week one. The, Mario's like the third high or third lowest odds to get fired first. And then he's 10 to one to win coach of the year. It's it's amazing that he's that high on both of those uh, markets, you know? Yeah, I know. I don't know if he can. Do you? Th- 
I, I guess you know, to segue right into the Bryant right now. Like, do you think if Miami is eleven and one this year, somewhere around there, or they or they win the ACC, do you think he'll still get no. the credit for it and have a chance to win the award? Because I sure as don't, Jeff. I, I don't think so. Look, I'll just go off of what happened in the Pac-12 when he was there. Right. Um, you know, Mario is a is a fiery coach. You know, he's a fiery personality. I'm not sure he makes a lot of friends in the industry. And the the Pac-12 when he was there and winning, they routinely like did not vote for him for coach of the year and for play. I think the year the Oregon won the Pac-12 in 2019, they had they had five players total on the first and second all Pac-12 teams, which is wild when you had win the conference. Like I don't know if he makes enough friends to win the award like this. I'm not saying that you know they're not going to vote for him. He's truly deserving for this, but I feel like if Ryan Day gets mm-hmm. to 11 and one beats Michigan, even if it goes 12 and 0, obviously. Like, you know he beats Michigan, even with an Oregon loss, I think Ryan Day is winning this award. There's so much pressure on him to get it done this season, to beat Michigan. Um, Fired maybe if you don't number win. one. It, yeah. it feels like this is Ryan Day's award to lose this year. I know Lanny's the favorite right now, but you know, that, maybe that Ohio State game and Eugene is the determining factor here and who wins this award. But I think Ryan Day is the one who who takes this one home. 12 to 1 is a pretty good press on that, Will. Yes. Yeah, and I think, Cristobal, you got to keep in mind, there is a clause in the Bear Bryant uh, Award uh, rules where if you lose a game because you forgot to take a knee in the victory formation, you are disqualified for life. So that never would, uh, he, he that and would Shannon will never live that down. <laughs> My goodness. And he did it twice. He did it once at Oregon, and he did it uh, okay. again. Oh, and even okay. The thing in Oregon, there was time on the clock still. Yes. They had to get a first down. At least in this situation, there was the knee yes. ends the game. A little bit, di- just a little different. I want to make that make that point. But isn't it true that the voters all think he's dumb at the end of games? So what happens if he reinvents the wheel he... and they win yeah. close games and Miami goes eleven and one and makes the college football playoff? He's the coach of the year then. That that see that's the great that's the great if, conversation. If if if, yeah. if 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 but still. Right. A lot of ifs. See, I, I think I think it's either what, what Jeff touched on, a narrative-based thing, like with Ryan Day, like, oh, you you lost him to Michigan again. Uh, you lost to all these portal. You say, you bring you save your job. You go to the playoff. Maybe you, you're in position to win a national title. The narrative is there for that, like, to, to play out. Like, like in 1993, when the narrative, where everyone wanted to get Bobby Bowden the national, his national title, and Notre Dame should have won the national title in 93 because they beat him head-to-head, yet they didn't. They gave Bobby and FSU the national title. That's fine. The narrative this year is going to be, like, if, if Ohio State and Ryan Day are good, like, it, it all plays out for that to happen but i like playing guys who are a little bit longer down the odds boards like like guys that aren't ranked in the preseason like guys that come from like wasn't sunny didn't sunny dykes win this award a couple of years ago when yeah. no one thought tcu was, was going to be good like look at guys in that league like matt campbell or gus malzahn but both teams that are unranked in the preseason poll uh, maybe a Rhett Lashley with SMU. Oh, I was going to say Lashley. Hey, Lashley, that's my team. That's Matt my Rule, guy. If, if Nebraska finally comes back and, yeah. and Rayola is the guy and, and they can compete in the Big Ten, like there's another, like those are four guys I think at a bit of a price yeah. that, that might be uh, up for a uh, conversation. And good for the books. I know as better as we complain about the books a lot, and a lot of times rightfully so, but hey, if you build it, they will come. Put these markets up. They're fun. They're great content. They're different ways to bet the sport, different ways to you know, get your opinion out there. I mean, because if it's just, hey, national champion and Heisman, well, that cuts it, that cuts down the contenders. That's a very short list, but when you start talking coach of the year, uh, you know, tight end of the year, running back, all these different awards, that's just, that opens things up where you know different guys, different guys can, can win different awards. You can get at your handicap or your opinions differently and you know, give the books credit. These are great markets. These are very much welcomed. I didn't look for a price on this guy, but now I'm curious. Does anybody have a number on uh, Mr. We're going to open it up this year, Kirk Ferentz? Anybody oh, see the Iowa goodness. number? What's I... he for coach of the year? <laughs> I, I gave that Iowa best bet, and then like two days later, the scrimmage report came out where, where, where K. McNamara <laughs> was like six for 26 for eight, eight yards. It, it, it all sounds good until you actually see the <laughs> Iowa <laughs> offense. Look, I, the, my favorite part of Big Ten Media Day was talking to about Iowa and Iowa people, and like the big takeaway was we have motion in our offense now. Like that just was. <laughs> and I still wager on them anyways to be a playoff team. It's my fault. Well, well we, we we Iowa always big part of the offense is tight end. Mackey Award is is an. I mean, it's funny. We weren't really planning on talking about this, and it's going through. 
And like the Mackey Award is like you look at the like the two favorites, Colson Loveland and Aranda Gadsden from Syracuse are like legit. And then you got Mitchell Dave, Mitchell Evans rather is there for Notre Dame. Like these are all like legit guys. And then you look further down the board and you and you got Luke Lachey from Iowa, you got Oscar Delp from, from Georgia, Brent Keithy from, from Utah, Terrence Ferguson from Oregon. Like, like they're a but Tyler Warren, I know they love it, Penn State. Like they they're a bunch of ways to go with this award like like i was ready to be like yeah, i, I want to bet gadsden and i see he's the favorite and and i looked down I'm like maybe i don't maybe there are, maybe there is a play to be had here will yeah and then don't forget i was still gonna have a big part of their offense that is punt and hope somebody fumbles it hope somebody runs into your punter that's still gonna be a big play for them uh i'm gonna go back to smu a team i like rj maryland son of russell maryland the great cowboy miami hurricane i guess bears too cheap to chip in enough nil to get him uh to miami but look he's 6'4 240 track star in high school he had seven touchdowns last year tied for the most uh, touchdowns among tight ends in the country. That's a team, when you look at their schedule, they don't have to play Miami or Clemson, NC State, Virginia Tech. They get Florida State at home. So if they emerge, if they're in the conference title game or who knows, win a conference, uh, I, I think Maryland's a guy that's certainly live. Yeah, you, 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 you're giving me grief. I have my Canes connection cat, cat hat, cap in, in, in the closet right now. I, I'm, I haven't contributed because I'm kind of like, see, this is like the... the uh... With the alligator arms. Well, not no, no, not the alligator arms. This is like my like like my conflict of interest type thing, like uh, ethics, like as a media member. Obviously, I want my alma mater to win, but like, should I give money to my school? Like, is that is that the right thing to do? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, we, we, you have to ask the question out loud. It's probably not a good idea, especially right, exactly. on this that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, those guys know I'm supporting them, and I, and and I want them to I, win. I, I agree. Don't... It, it is unethical. The ethical thing would be to take that money instead of donating it to the school, donate to some of the voters, maybe Venmo them. And, and, and since we're voting on some, <laughs> betting on some of this stuff, send it to them. Yeah, we need more people on the payroll, definitely. Um, Cam McCormick is coming back for year nine at Miami uh, to play tight end. Maybe Bears <laughs> been giving the wrong guys the wrong envelopes. Um, yeah, exactly. Delp, Delp is interesting at Georgia because by all accounts, Beck has been looking to the tight end position a lot. And that's what these Georgia quarterbacks have done, you know, since, since Kirby got down there and they've changed the offense around, they love the play action to the back and pop the tight end. And of course, Brock Bowers is gone. So a lot of targets have to go elsewhere. I'd probably go Delp, but you know, these markets wide receiver tight end for the most part, I think these are ones where if you're looking to bet early, you can go out and get a guy 30, 40, 50 to one, he comes onto the scene, then you could bet off it, right? If you have a 40 to one tight end who catches three touchdowns in the first two weeks, he's going to go all the way down to like eight to one. And then you can bet one of the favorites. I, I wouldn't be betting favorites early in any of these markets because it's not like Gadsden's going to ever be 20 to one or 30 to one. You know, you're always going to get those favorites in single digits for the most part. So this would be time to just pick off higher numbers for tight end, for coach, for quarterback, whatever it is, these are the big number grabs before the season starts. Yeah, Mason Taylor at LSU. I know they got a bunch of great wideouts there, but he's he he's like thirty to one. And like I said, Brent Keithy, who was a massive part of Utah's offense, and they're probably going to be throwing the ball a, a lot more this year. He, he said I think would be worth a play too. So final position uh, award category: Doak Walker, uh, Ollie Gordon back. Odds are he's not going to win again. He's favored to win, but I don't know if I could play him. Uh, I don't know if I could play either of the Ohio State backs because they're going to split carries. And James Peoples, is, the third string guy, is legit uh, as well. I bet RJ Harvey from UCF. He, he's 50 to 1, was a semifinalist for the award last year. He wasn't even really the guy until about four or five games into the season last year. Had some monster games last year to finish up the year. Over 1,400 yards. That offense should be better this year. They're going to be in the Big 12 now, so he's probably going to face some some kind of mediocre defenses there. He's got a big game, I think, during the middle of the year with florida like he's got an opportunity to to i, I think really make a uh make, make a make an impact in the uh in, in the in the doke walker race this year so rj harvey again long number 50 to 1 gets off to a good start this year who knows Give me Jordan James. I think Jeff Schwartz's NIL checks at least get home. Uh, I love his kid. Only 100 oh carries or so last year. Over seven yards a carry. 11 touchdowns. He's going to be on a team that's going to be in the spotlight. There is no more marquee regular season game than 
October 12th, Ohio State at Oregon. If you can have a big game with the nation watching, uh, that is a, a statement sort of moment. I think the talent's there. I think the team, rest of the team is there. Give me uh, give me Jordan James in that 25 to 1 range. Jeff Schwartz can't wait to go to that game. He's uh, it's Yom Kippur. It's so far, I, I was talking to my dad like a month ago about this, and we were like, it's October 12th. And he's like, Yom Kippur is later this year. I'm like, I hope it's not October 12th. It's October 12th. So I will not be going to Ohio State uh, at, at Oregon. J- Jordan James is a better runner of the football than Buck Irving is. I think he will get more yards rushing. I don't, I don't know if he's as dynamic and explosive as a runner, but he's a better runner. I, I was looking at the past winners of this award, guys, and be curious to see – if these were all the favorites, but they're all the big names, Ollie Gordon, Bijan Robinson, Kenneth Walker, Najee Harris, Jonathan Taylor twice, Bryce Love, Freeman, Henry, Gordon. Like it feels like the favorite sort of wins this award or near the top every year. So like, 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 like Jinchi, uh, um, Ashton uh, Genty at Boy State, he's really good. Like he might be the best runner in the country, but he's at Boise State. He's not going to win this award. So keep that in mind when you look at, um, sort of where, you, where you're going with this award. Jordan James, Oregon, like a great option there for um, a lot of spotlight and a lot of attention. Sammy, you got anything for us here? I was actually thinking? looking at R.J. Harvey this morning, and when you started talking about him at 50 to 1, I just logged into my phone and bet it. Has anybody ever seen that gif of the koala bear? He's like clinging onto the human, and the human's mm-hmm. walking around, and the koala's just attached to the, <laughs> the leg. That was me betting R.J. Harvey while you were right. wrapping it like up. It. Yeah, so I, I didn't really have a, a back in the fight, but but now I do at 50 to 1, so I appreciate the, uh, the heads up. Any, any, Bear, any any Damian Martinez? Any Damian Martinez action? Uh, yeah, I think, they're, I think they're okay at running. I think he's fine. I, I don't know if he's I don't know if he's kind of like the breakaway back that you're going to need. I, I like him. I don't think he's got the that type of like burst to really put that forward that much production. And, and they got some other guys. I think you were going to uh, get some carries as well. So I, I think I wouldn't I, I wouldn't play him. I think they're going to be throwing the ball so much that uh, probably will, Did you we'll, say we'll a play. Miami team is going to throw the ball a lot. That's what the, that's what this offense is going to be now a throwing the ball offense. They learned their they learned a lesson with Herbert. <laughs> Mario coach of the year, right? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll we'll see. All right. Hey, I want to throw one quick baseball question at you because I know Jeff, your affinity for for West Coast for the Dodgers, and I and I know Sammy Waller, but like Otani is a massive favorite to win the NL MVP. And I just want to throw this out there. Do you think that? I mean, they've kind of been scuffing and, and, and hanging around, but now the return of Mookie Betts and like if they start pulling away now with Betts back in the lineup, do you think that might cause voters to be like, you know, is Otani really the MVP? And did, did they maybe look to, to to Marte or someone else? I mean, I think Otani's probably still going to win, but do you, do you think you can make a, a case for that argument, Will? Every, the problem is, I, I completely agree with your line of thinking. The problem is every time a, a contender sort of pops up to threaten him they get hurt Marte is hurt we'll see by the time people listen to this maybe we'll have more clarity I guess he's going for an MRI on Tuesday left the game after one at bat in the game on uh, on Monday night of course that brought all of the people say hey void Marte bets I deserve a oh, refund all of that which no. we all love Lindor started to pop up he's cooled off I agree there's some vulnerability there if bets had come back two three weeks earlier maybe he could have you know won this award and he was tracking trending t- to win it I, j- I agree somebody could steal it I just can't find who that person is harper missed time i just don't know who steals it from him yeah that's the problem it's not like otani is having an all world season it's that the competition isn't great and and basically you look at every book across the country right now it's basically saying it's otani or Marte. but to will's point Marte just got banged up i actually not to answer this on the other side of the league bear but i started the short judge two weeks ago with bobby witt at 10 at 8 at 650 I mean, if the Royals can hang on, and I don't think they're going to win the division, but make the postseason, and he has the numbers he's gotten. I mean, we haven't seen a metrical shortstop like this putting up numbers like Witt is since A-Rod in the early 2000s. That just shows you how talented and how good he's been. The problem with Bobby Witt Jr., he's buried in the middle of the country, and it's not exactly a charter franchise. So, I mean, you think about it, you got Otani in L.A., you got Judge in New York, and they're both massive favorites. But 
I started the short judge before uh, Otani. Well, I think long term for the playoffs, I like the I like the Royals' chances of getting to the World Series more than do the Yankees. So wow. we'll uh, we'll see what happens in in, in the postseason. But uh, wrapping up, back to football. Um, of course, all of us got asked to contribute on FoxSports.com. We have our uh, our title picks. So I, I guess with that, with just the thumbnail uh, thumbnail version. Uh, Sammy, who, who, who's your uh, who's your title pick? You know, obviously, you can read that article on TalkSports.com for a little bit more uh, detail. I wanted to take Ohio State or Georgia, but I was just trying to give people a bigger number. And in fact, I was in the South Point last week, and Chris Andrews and I were talking about that great prop that he's got up. You either get those two or you get the field. So you get the dogs, the Buckeyes, or everybody else. And I would take the two. Um, now you get like plus 105. I think that's a really good bet. But I went to LSU. You know, I, I know they lose the Heisman Trophy winner, but Nussmeyer is a stud, guys. And we saw him a couple times in relief last year. He can spin it. We know they're going to have backs and receivers that have skill and speed. They are loaded on that side of the ball in terms of talent. And if this defense can take a step back or a step up, rather, you know, last year it was kind of a question mark. I think LSU is going to be right there knocking on the door for a five or a six seed in the college football playoff because the four conference winners – go one through four, but LSU could easily be a two. Alabama is going to be a little bit down this year. I have my concerns about some of the other teams aside of um, Georgia. So I think LSU at, at 20 to one, you're able to find that's crazy to me. That's, that's a playoff team. That's a 10 and two team. And if they can get in, they have the depth and the talent to make a run. Well, I like Oregon seven to one, eight to one. I think, look, Landing gets a lot of credit nationally. He's a good coach. Anybody would want to start their program with Landing, but he's got to get over the hump too. He's lost to DeBoer a couple of times. He, it's now is the time. I think he has the team. I think Gabriel gives them a different dynamic where you can stretch the field. Bo Nix was a lot of underneath stuff. Uh, I think the talent's there. They get Ohio State in their building. Uh, to, to Sammy's point, you want to be a little different. You don't want to just give away, you know, the three to one, four to one short shots. You do want to be a little bit different with these sometimes, and maybe there's an element of that to play. But I'm not completely sold on. Ohio State being unbeatable. Georgia, I think next year, if they keep these guys, they'll be better than this year. This is a, a very good to great Georgia team, but this isn't like an unbeatable Georgia team. I went Oregon. I mean, I, I went Georgia just so I didn't take Oregon, I guess. Um, look, here's my thing about the playoff. And we, we were talking about this offline, uh, and I know you tweeted about this, Bear, is the playoff is not about finding – a different winner, right? It's a just different format. It's more games. It's going to be more fun, and, and it'll allow us in November to talk about the playoffs with a, a wider, a wider range of teams, right? But in the end, the teams with the most depth are the ones that are going to win this championship. And you look at the four or five teams that they're capable of doing that: Georgia, Ohio State, Oregon, maybe Texas, right? Uh, uh, who else are we considering that has the depth to to, to do Texas. this? Texas. Texas, I think I just said Texas, right? Oh, so like, like, th like that. That's it. I mean, like, who who's gonna win three three games at the minimum, maybe four against? I, I was looking at this. I was at a Utah radio show today. Utah, I saw was like, you know, the projected playoffs. They'd be the four seed, okay, if they win the Big Twelve. They'd have to play Oregon, who's a five seed, then Georgia, and then like Ohio State. Who, you're not, like, the like, there's only four teams that can do that, and like, yeah. and, and so that's that, that's the thing about the playoff is. So for me, I'm just looking at the favorites. I know it might be boring, but Georgia has the most depth. Maybe Ohio State does. Maybe you are you know are you you argue Oregon does. Maybe Texas has it. But I just default to that team for now. I could change my mind as we go through the season. But you know, if to to, to LSU's point, to Sammy's point, there's a lot of unknowns there, right? Especially on defense and and Nussmeyer. If they show by week six, like, oh, okay. It, like their team, they, he's recruited well, got got portal players in, pedigree of winning a lot of football games there. But other than that, there's not a lot of teams, I think, that have the depth to win at least three or four of these games. Well, I'm thinking Correct. about that Utah rollover in the playoff. Like That's the only <laughs> thing I can think about now. You're, you're probably better off just money lining them in all three of those games. Yes. They've been betting the future. Hit up your buddy on Twitter who wants to book you. He'll book you. Yeah, I'm going to text him right now. Hell yeah. <laughs> on that note, we're going to wrap this one up. Yeah, the Utah money line rollover in the playoffs by, by a, a, a mutual uh, follow or comment on Twitter I think is a good way to uh, – Leave us wanting more for next week. Thanks, gentlemen.
Bear, it's great to have those guys back in the gambling group chat for for college football. Uh, Will likes Oregon too much. It, it really bothers me. And we went a little <laughs> Miami heavy. Like 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 it was very Miami heavy. Bear. Yeah, I, I, he is. I, I think he's just kind of pandering to uh to both of us picking Oregon to win the title and then talking about Miami and Mar. Like I, I think he's just trying to put in a, a good word for the uh get, get, getting good with the two hosts here. <laughs> I'll, I'll take Oregon to win. Don't get me wrong, man. I, I talked to a buddy of mine, Dan Rubenstein, a solid verbal, like every four days. I'm like, how great would it be if Oregon just won the championship this season? Oh, it'd be the best. Well, the best is our best bets. And Barry, you're going to lead us off here with your college football best bet for the season. Yeah. You see, you put the pressure on me because last week you gave an eight to one shot on Iowa to, to, to make the college football play. So I had one up you, or actually almost four time up you. Uh, and I went with Jeremiah Smith to win the college football to, to win the college football playoff. No, Ohio State might win the college football playoff. Yeah. And if Jeremiah Smith wins the Belenikoff, you have a really good chance of winning the, the college football playoff. But yeah, I went I, I went Jeremiah Smith to win the Belenikoff at thirty to one. Uh, I think he could have come out this year in the NFL draft and been a top ten draft pick. I think he has it. I, so much talk about uh, Quincy Agupa. The other wide receiver, I think Smith is better. I know Ohio State has a ton of offensive weapons, but but I think Smith has an opportunity to be one of the more dynamic playmakers uh, and weapons in the country this year. And I think whomever the Ohio State quarterback is will be targeting him early, often, and a lot. He has an opportunity early in the year to really break in with some monster numbers before the bigger games later in the year against Oregon and Michigan. Give me Jeremiah Smith. It's a nice price at 30-1 to 1 to win the Blitnikoff. Do you have any concern that they're not going to pass the ball as much with Chip Kelly? No, I, I don't. I, I, th- I think they're going to be. I think I think Chip will uh, will get the ball. His Oregon offense has passed the ball. I mean, maybe in, in, in a different way, but I, I I think they will find many ways to get him the ball. Well, he, I mean, look, he's what six four, like two ten. I mean, he's 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 a very large <laughs> number one player in the country. His highlight videos in high school were fantastic. I know Oregon was on him, tried to get on him at, at the very end, but he stuck with Ohio State. And obviously, that offense has produced so many wide receivers doing great things in the NFL. Bear, uh, I'm going to go Evan Stewart here to win the Blitnikoff, the Oregon transfer. Um, give me the A&M transfer to Oregon. Um, and look, Troy Franklin last year, fourth round draft pick for the Ducks. Had 81 catches and nearly 1,400 yards and 14 touchdowns. That 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 that'll, that'll get you in the discussion, right? Uh, now they need to yeah. give Evan Stewart about 100 catches because uh, Tez Johnson had 80, 80, 85. So you know, they find a way to, to to get him more touches. But here's the deal: Evan Stewart, outside of maybe Smith and and Burt, I mean, who is a better physically gifted wide receiver in the country? He's up there at the top. This offense will pass the football. They'll get him the ball. They pass the ball down the field. Oregon's going to be in the discussion to 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 win a championship, just like Ohio State is. So we're basically choosing the, the best wide receivers of the offenses that we expect to be one and two in the country in yards and points and points per play, yards per play, I should say, points per drop, like all things that matter. Uh, so I'll go with Evan Stewart here. I like that. I like that. Again, we'll we'll we'll, we'll see if we can uh, get some get get some targets and uh, and get enough. And we'll, we'll see if Oregon can complete the trifecta of uh, of James Doak Walker, Dylan Gabriel Heisman, and uh, and Evan Stewart Belindikoff. If that Lanning, happens, I think we're winning a championship. Lanning, Lanning, Bryan, Oregon, Lanning, Bryan, Oregon yeah. Big Ten, and national champs. I I, just, what a year that would be for Jeff Schwartz. I just I don't want any of those. I just want to win a championship. I just all I need in life. My my Giants have won in baseball. Okay. The Lakers have won five and a half championships since I have been a, a young child. I, the 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 bubble one's a half championship bear. Um, to the 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 Chiefs have won three times. The Niners as a kid won once. Like I, I'm set on pro sports bear. I, I I grew up a Bruin fan. Not many championships happening there. One in basketball '95. Oregon, I need it. I need it, bear. I need a championship a championship for Oregon soon. Yeah, I, I need a championship for Miami too. I mean, I was there when we won in uh, in '90. 90- 91, probably should have won in 92, just got blown out by Alabama. Uh, whatever happened, happened. Not, the funny thing is 90 was the best team. Team you know, wound up losing week one to Detmer at BYU, and then uh, wound up losing when they kicked, decided to kick off to Rocket Ismail at Notre Dame. But that 90 team was, was loaded, and I think was 
the best team. What? If it's Miami, Oregon in the championship game, Bear, what are we doing? <laughs> which is what it sh- which is what it should have been in two thousand one. Yes. What 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 are we doing? Like what are we doing for that game? I can't. Oh my god, he's incredible. We're going. Actually, no. Oh. The last place I want to be is with. Oh, you I'm going to the title game. If, that if Oregon's in it. game. I'm going if Oregon's well, in you, it. Oh, I know. I know. I know you're easy. I, I, I see. I, you know what? I probably w- would get guilted into going too. See, the, the, unlike, unlike the, see that that I might go to, because I mean Miami's one, and it, it, it'll be it would be cool to go and see a bunch of old friends. Like, if the Jets ever make the Super Bowl, like I don't know if I want to go. Like I really would just probably yeah. lock myself in a safe room all by myself, and and just watch. Yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about that happening, so it's okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, we're gonna talk about that. With uh, with Will and Sammy uh, uh, in, in a different podcast uh, coming out later in the week uh, in the NFL pod, so make sure you uh, check that one out when it when it when it drops. But appreciate everybody tuning in for this one. Whether you're watching us on YouTube or checking us out wherever you download your uh, your podcast on Apple, Spotify. Make sure you subscribe everywhere. Great review. Let us know how we're doing. We, we, we enjoy you the, uh, the feedback on all social medias. And remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs>